Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Assurant Incorporated, ticker AIZ. Over the next five minutes, I'll discuss both the valuation of this company and my thoughts about the business quality. Let's dive in. First up is industry. This is in the insurance industry. Insurance companies are kind of interesting, so let's see what they do. They provide lifestyle and housing solutions that provide support, protect, and connect consumer purchases in North America. So they have global lifestyle, global housing, global pre-need. What does that mean? Lifestyle offers mobile device, extended service products, related services for mobile devices, consumer electronics appliances. That sounds like a good business to me. Um, global housing is lender-placed homeowner's insurance manufactured housing, flood insurance, and renter's insurance. And then the pre-need is pre-funded funeral insurance, final need. This sounds like a pretty good business um, from what I know of those areas. The beta 0.5886 gets really interesting to me. The, anytime the beta is substantially below one, that implies it's relatively lower volatility. Lower volatility on the stock price a lot of the time means lower volatility in the business. Not always, but it's an interesting fact that you want to highlight when you see it. Now, return on equity. First thing I see here is that they lost money in 2002, um, so that's not good. But they've had 19 straight years of profitability since then, which is very attractive. One thing that immediately stands out is that the last year, 2021 of data, is abnormal. Um, at least it's out of sync with the rest of the previous years. Your return on equity jumped to 23.98% versus the previous year was 7.5%. And there's no other year anywhere close to that besides it looks like 2006 at 19%. Um, you're, you do have some ups and downs. So it looks like you had a bottom in 2010. You had a bottom in 2015. Um, so relatively all over the place, not super stable, but otherwise has been decreasing since 20, 2006 in return on equity. You know, it's interesting. This is okay. This is a pass. What I do have concerns on is that I'm going to see numbers, especially on the valuation side and the growth side that are going to be based upon this 2021 result. And I don't know if that's real, especially with the pandemic. When you think about what businesses they're in, this might not be a real result. And it could be overstating their earnings. But let's dive on in anyway. And this is where we look at 10-year median returns is valuable because the 10 years is going to take your last 10 years of results instead of just here. We see return on investment 4.6%. That's fine. That's a lot of bonds. It makes a lot of sense. Return on equity and assets 9.5%. This is a little low for me. I'd like it to be double digits. Now, because it's an insurance company, it's relatively okay where it is, but I'd still like it to be the 10, 15, 10 to 20% range, really. So we're a little low. Again, last year's result 24%, perfect, but that's not normal for this business. So it's really hard to say this is what I'm going to go with. In terms of quality right now, I'm kind of eh. We'll see how it goes. Now, valuation looks very attractive with PE of 7.8. Anytime a PE is below 10, it gets my attention. Anytime a PE is below 15, I think it's relatively attractively priced to buy, assuming the rest of it works out. If you can get a high quality company below a PE of 10, that can be extremely attractive. PE of eight here is like a free cash flow, you know, a cash flow yield of about 12%. And then if you throw that in with the growth rates we're seeing of EPS of 15%, that would be very attractive. However, remember, this number is relatively high here. Year. So I think the PE is likely understated or overstated. And it should be much higher. And the EPS is probably not 15% growth. And you get that because when you look at revenue growth, you have 2% revenue growth across the decade. So in that sense, if 2% revenue growth, 2% premium growth, 2% asset growth, if that matches up with 2% earnings growth, then a PE of 8 is cheap still but it's not super unreasonable it might i mean it means that maybe a pe of 12 is a reasonable valuation so just something to think about now um let's see so you can see here your earnings per share basically jumped from seven dollars a share to 22 dollars per share in one year that's not normal um so it's something to think about and you can see these dividend growth rates four five six seven percent kind of showing what a normalized growth is in the most recent period if you're enjoying this video so far hit that like button don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notifications of future videos now let's go to the income statement now in income statement we can see that we've had positive net income every year for the last decade we are seeing some very, so it's an insurance company, which means you're going to see variances in claims and benefits, and that's going to drive a lot of the bottom line um, 
income here. And so you, you see in 2015, you had a low on net income because your policy benefits and claims was $4.7 billion um, versus you know, in the trailing 12 month period, it was only 2 billion. And so you can see a huge difference here is that despite the fact that you're continuing to grow and you have those policies, you're at a relatively low point on your claims. So you've had low claims during the pandemic that leads to higher results. And so I think it's probably a cyclical difference there. Now, shares outstanding have declined over time, which means they're buying back shares, which I think we can validate from the cash flow statement. Let's look at net issuance of cash flow. So you can see they've constantly bought back shares every year. I like that. That means that this company is more aligned with shareholders generally. Um, they are issuing shares through stock-based compensation, which I don't like. But you can see that the stock-based compensation is always much lower than the net issuance of common stock. So it means they are consistently buying back shares, which is why you're seeing this number drop over time. Very positive sign. It means that their net income can grow slower and you can still get a very solid EPS growth. So I like what I see there, the balance sheet. Let's see, future policy, unearned premiums. You can see that growing over time. So they're building that backlog. Um, these are probably long-term benefits that they, they put in. And so you're going to get some of that float benefit. Um, seems okay. The problem is it's very hard to an analyze through this quick FS system like I'd like to do with all my companies because it's hard to tell is 2021 real. So for me, this company is a maybe. It requires further research. The valuation is very attractive. If this PE of 7.8 is real and sustainable, if these earnings per share of 22 are real and sustainable, then the company is cheap. Even at 2% earning revenue growth, this company is really cheap at a PE of 8. Um, so that's attractive and that's something to be thinking about here because these return on equity numbers in the 24% range are very, very good. Um, until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.